Andrew. Yes. What are we gonna do today, Andrew? We're gonna clean a carburetor. We're cleaning not just a carburetor, we're cleaning a CT90 carburetor. Actually, a 1979 CT90 carburetor. It looks like crap. See it? My boss had it on her little Trail 90. So we got this brand new ultrasonic cleaner that we're gonna try out, but we gotta plumb it first. So we gotta get all this crap out of the way. And then we're gonna start rolling on this carburetor. So stay tuned. Right, Andrew? Stay tuned. Cleaner. Carburetor. Ultrasonic cleaner. We're gonna get this show on the road. But first, like I said, we're gonna plumb this thing. Right? Bucket. Goodies. Parts. Fittings. That's how that's gonna go. So we're just, uh, we're gonna run some PVC on this down, down this to this bucket. So we can drain the crap out when we're done. Should be good. We got it all plumbed now. You can see right here. Got it running down the back, down into the bucket. That way we don't have a big mess on our hands when we're draining off the nasties. So now we're ready to start the CT90 carb rebuild. We're gonna try some of this Simple Green HD cleaner. Uh, we're gonna dilute it down a little bit. We're not gonna put a ton of water in this. So we'll dilute that down and then we're gonna start pulling that carburetor apart. Uh, we've got a rebuild kit for it. So we'll see how bad a condition this carburetor is really in. Well, as you can see, the CT90 carburetor has been through hell and back, it looks like. Um, the outside of the carburetor is filthy, but that doesn't necessarily mean the inside's terrible. But we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, start pulling things apart. Before you do this, on the air, air screw mixture, this one looks like it's just got, like it's got a, an idle screw and an air screw mixture. On both of those, you want to reference how many turns they've been uh, turned. Uh, in this case, my boss actually kind of fiddled with it, so I don't know. But a good reference point is two turns out to start with, and you adjust as the motor's running, uh, according to videos that I've seen. So we're going to start pulling this thing apart, and we'll go from there. Inside of the carburetor doesn't look bad as you can see and that's usually a lot of times the case the outsides get really bad but the inside it looks like the jets are pretty clean um, we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart and clean it anyhow but uh, we're gonna take these jets out see how that jet came out real nice and easy there could be little bits of material in these jets that can cause problems but so far it's looking pretty good the carburetor looks pretty good this one apart now which could be part of the problem we're not we're gonna try real careful not to mess with the this is the uh, that pin just slides out and this is the float and the the needle and seat right here so this is the the seat and this is the needle and that those go into each other and that that regulates the flow of how much gas goes into the float bowl so now we'll start to uh, kind of pull these things apart it looks like the pet cock right here for the fuel. Um, I don't know if we want to tear into that or not, but we might just pull that apart and just kind of look it over, make sure everything's good on that. Andrew, my assistant, is going to go ahead and, and drop that down into the gunk. And we're going to get this going. We kind of put a rubber mat down just because we didn't want stuff falling through. I don't know if that's going to create a problem or not, but uh, we shall see. Looks like it's down in the gunk. I'm gonna fire this thing up. I don't think he knows how to actually do it. Do you, do you know what you're doing? No. Good, because I don't either. We'll see how this works. All right, it looks like it, this is after 20 minutes of cleaning, and we're gonna go ahead and pull that carburetor out just to look at it and see where we're at with it. Uh, it already looks a lot better. Still needs some more love, so we're gonna give it some more love, but it's getting there. All right, we've got this thing totally clean now so I'm gonna pull this out this came out really nice so you can see a huge difference looks like a brand new carburetor look at that so we're gonna start now reassembling it I have these you can you can pick these up on Amazon but they're a little uh, 
jet uh, cleaners and so I just kind of chase these through the jets to kind of just make sure that there's nothing clogging those jets up and and they're all clean usually the ultrasonic cleaner will do its job it'll it'll get after these jets real good so I'm just kind of checking these and setting them aside making sure everything's clean on these things run one through this here goes through nicely see you want gas to flow there's little tiny holes on the side that I don't have anything that I can run through there but the jets are actually if you blow through them they're clear everything's clear you can hold them up to the light and see light through them so those are good so we're setting all these aside right now and uh, you can see how clean this came out and uh, I just went ahead and rinse this screen and put it under under some clean water so we're going to start reassembling this uh, again like this thing was already kind of out of adjustment so I'm not too concerned about the adjustments on this one we're going to re refer to the new rebuild kit here and see what we got that will actually work on this carburetor um, some of the stuff may not be compatible sometimes these carburetors are universal but you can see this gasket's going to be good so we're going to put the gasket in here, get on, set that aside. We also got the screw for the float bowl that needs to go in. Here's another, you want to make sure that hole's clear. It appears to be clear. I'm going to run a wire through it just to make sure if I can, yeah. So you see that wire goes all the way through. So we'll go ahead and put the screw in here. This is, this is, like I said before, this is just to drain the extra gas out of the float bowl when you're when you're done riding or putting it away for a season or whatever. Now we got the new o-ring on that. Get that done. Okay, that's all the way in. We'll set this aside. It's got the, you got the o-ring for the float bowl and then we also have this screw back in with its new o-ring. So I'm going to set that aside. Now we're going to go to this, uh, the top half of the carburetor and I'm going to go ahead and find the right gasket for that, which is this right here. We're going to pop that in place. That, that actually is going to go, that's the manifold gasket right there. Okay, the, the uh, choke seems to be working fine. Prior to this I ran air through this carburetor and blew it all out and made sure I got all the water out of it. Okay, so I've got the two jets right here that I'm putting back in. Those are going to go in next. We got all these, we got now, we got these two jets screwed back in, they're ready to go. Now we're going to go over to the side of the carburetor here, and we're going to get the, the, the idle and the um, air fuel mixture screw, or the, the fuel mixture screw put in. I don't know what you want to call it, but that's what it is. Anyhow, we'll get that back in. Okay, so I got this first uh, screw screw I think this is the idle screw I'm not positive but I got this one set it's closed all the way so I'm going to bring it out two turns now they recommend that that's a good starting point and then you adjust from there so that's what we're doing I'm going to get this the next screw in and we'll go from there all the way down you don't ever want to screw them down tight because it'll mess up the uh, the needles on these things and uh, so we're going to just we're going to bring this out two turns and then we kind of have a starting point. Now I, I haven't changed any of the settings on this float. See this is this is all uh, pre-bent and adjusted. So um, I, I'm assuming it's in the right spot and we're going to leave it that way. So we'll go from there. Put the needle and seat in. Or when you put the needle to the float on you hang it off of this arm right here. You try not to bend these tabs. And then we slip it down on there. And then you just have to get the uh, the pin through there like so there we go. And what that does that allows the fuel to come into the, the float bowl and fills up and then as that lifts that raises up and shuts the fuel level down so the floats back in now we're gonna go ahead and put that float bowl back on so that goes on like so. Go ahead and line that up. Put the two screws in. Okay, so now we got that all together. Now we're going to go ahead and this takes a, a gasket right here. So we got a new gasket for that. We also need to put this screen in. So that I think the screen goes in first, it does. So I want to drop this screen in here the right way. The screen kind of helps prevent 
getting crap in the float bowl. We'll drop that, that O-ring in and throw this on and we'll be good to go. The carburetor will be done at that point. So it's, it's fairly simple to do these carburetors. Um, sometimes they can be hit and miss though. Sometimes they work great and sometimes you're like, what did I do to this thing? So you just kind of have to uh, go through and make sure you get everything really clean. Just make sure there's no, no gr fine grains in there. And that's what's nice about having an ultrasonic cleaner. That'll get a lot of that fine stuff out of there. All right, well, that's it for the carburetor. We got her done. It looks, looks brand new. So if you have any questions, don't forget to ask down below and I'll try and answer them as quick as I can. And also don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and just remember, I'm just a man in a cave causing mayhem. Thanks again for watching.